All right, so welcome. We have Josh Eldridge with us today, and we're back telling another healing story. Mm -hmm. Now, Josh has a great story. For all you out there that are dealing with Crohn's, colitis, IBS, SIBO, these are some of the things that Josh went through when he was chronically ill. I mean, the list goes on. We could once you get into medical mediums information, you figure out there's so much more than what you're being told by these these conventional doctors. So, um, Josh, why don't you introduce yourself, and we'll kind of go from there. Hi, everybody. Nice to see everybody. I'm Josh Eldridge. Yep, I own JAE Building Inc. I'm a construction worker. Um, I used to uh, also do landscaping when I was younger and masonry, and I worked uh, as a firefighter EMT for a little while. Uh, I'm a father, and I'm living with my uh, wife and son right now, and uh, basically an amazing uh, chronic illness survival story is just unreal, um, miraculous, owed all to medical medium information, 100%. Cool. So... Typically, how we start these is tell us your your story before you found medical medium. So the story from you know you becoming sick to dealing with all the conventional medicine uh, doctors to eventually finding medical medium. Walk us through what that was like for you. And I'm gonna slip away, put the baby down for a nap. I will be back. <laughs> um. Well, you know, as a kid, you know, I grew up uh, poor. We had standard American household to the extreme. You know, we, uh, God bless my mother. She worked so hard as a single mother to take care of me. Um, but we, uh, you know, we lived off fast food quite frequently um, and bacon on the weekends with Wonder Bread and Miracle Whip maybe a little milk, you know, that was like maybe all I ate all day, <laughs> you know, canned SpaghettiOs and stuff. I knew every fast food restaurant by heart. Now, when I was a baby, my mother actually initially worked in a scented candle factory, you know, very Charles Dickens, very, uh, you know, early Industrial Revolution style. And, well, she was pregnant with me right up until the day she went up into labor. And I can remember going to visit her as a toddler and trying to hold my breath. When we pull into the parking lot, I could smell the candle factory, you know, and I knew it was bad for me. And we had to go in and say hi to her and everything. It was brutal. Um, so I'm sure that had an effect on me. And when I was born, I actually had a hernia that I had to get operated on when I was uh, two. So that was pretty brutal. Um, we grew up, you know, in old homes in New England. It was, you know, lead paint, lead in the pipes lead paint flaking from the ceiling and the windows and everything. So it's toxic exposure like all the time, asbestos, I mean, you name it. Um, as a kid, my, mo my mother was a firefighter. She, she later became one of the first female uh, fire captains in the world. I I'm pretty sure she was the first female fire captain on planet Earth. I'm still trying to work that out, see if I can prove it. But it was pretty early on in the 80s where she got that. Um, so, but as a result of that, and we got exposed to a lot of nasties all the time. You know, she would bring home stuff, and we would get sick. And then at 10, I got one of the worst Epstein-Barr infections that the area had ever seen. In fact, my pediatrician didn't know what it was. I was sick, and I was in the hospital, and I was out of school for weeks. Finally, they did some kind of blood work, which came back positive for Epstein-Barr. He said, oh, he's got Epstein-Barr. You know, there you go. There, there it is. Um, after that, I had a lot of damage. I, I had spleen problems, and I couldn't participate in sports or anything like that for months uh, after that. I was, I, it was pretty bad. I was out of school for, like, I think about two months. Um, so that put me down for a while. Um, and then uh, one day I was at a friend's house, and I wanted to go home in the night. I was just kind of scared. I just wanted to go home. I was young. And so I had this idea, I was going to take a thermometer and heat it up in a, in a pot of hot water and then uh, put it in my mouth and go into the parents' room and say, oh, I got a temperature, I got to go home, you know. And instead, I heated up the glass thermometer so much, I put it in my mouth, it burst, and I got mercury and glass all in my mouth uh -oh. as a young kid. Spit it out as best as I could, but God knows where that went into my body <laughs> right away. Jeez. So Epstein-Barr, then mercury, right? Um, 
so that wasn't good. And then, uh, you know, and getting into my teen years in high school, I was recreating, as people might imagine, you know, having a good time and, and just uh, getting really crazy. And then I got into um, uh, college and then uh, the fire academy. Um, after I graduated from college, I went to firefighter EMT training, went through that, got a lot of crazy toxic exposure as a result of all that stuff. Um, a lot of the fire foams and fire retardants and stuff like that we've found is just like really, really bad for you um, as we've gone on. And it, and it resulted in me starting to develop digestive problems, which had started at a young age where I just felt sick all the time from eating standard American and just being, I just get used to feeling sick all the time. You don't even really realize it anymore, but somehow I had fought through that and I had gotten in, you know, into bodybuilding as a young adult and I was like, you know, just working out all the time and work a construction during the day and then um, fighting fires at night and stuff like that, driving the ambulance that night. You know, it was a really intense, adrenaline-filled uh, young lifestyle. Um, but anyways, it was exhaustion. It was gluttony because every personal trainer I was talking to was telling me, protein, 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 have your protein shakes, have your chicken in the morning. I was having ice cream smoothies for breakfast with kielbasa and bacon thinking that that was what was going to help my you know my muscle development and all this stuff and it was probably just killing my heart mm -hmm. um so that was really extreme and uh then i started to understand that i was exhausted all the time if i stopped moving i would just fall asleep i would just like it was almost like i had narcolepsy i was just exhausted i was pushing my body to every extreme at every angle and I was eating garbage that was just starting to make me worse and worse and worse. Um, I started to have some digestive issues. And then in my 20s, one day I was going to a family cookout and I started burping. And I just started burping relentlessly. And it wasn't, you know, at first it was kind of funny. It was like, this is weird. Like, what's happening? And then after a while, I was like, this isn't funny anymore. Like, this hurts. And it felt like pressure was building so much in my system like an overfilled balloon like my esophagus was going to burst there was so much gas building up and so finally my mother happened to be at the cookout and realized like we got to go to the hospital or something What's wrong with him so he we went to the hospital the hospital took me in and just said well you're obviously having a panic attack here's some advent you know there you go like and then yeah. so they put me on um anti-anxiety medication and basically just sent me home did an order an endoscopy. I got the endoscopy, came back negative, and then my life seemed to revert to normal. Nothing that was weird, and and it never came back until later in life. You know, I got married, we had a baby, and I started my own business like in very rapid succession, all within a couple of years. Um, I, I had had my own business, but I was working full time with another guy and doing weekend warrior stuff, and then I just decided to risk it and go for it and start my own thing and that obviously increased my workload exponentially and made me exhausted i was working you know 70 hours a day easily i mean 70 hours, 70 hours a week easily and it just was burning me out you know i i was exhausted until finally i just felt like i was hitting a wall you know i was just hitting a wall and it felt like my body wasn't cooperating anymore um until about 2015, uh, I tried to go vegan, but I did it all wrong. I was eating high fat, high protein, um, basically no fruit, okay? I was eating some vegetables, a lot of grains, a lot of bread, a lot of wheat, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, nooch, you know, the stuff they call, you know, the, the uh, nutritious yeast, the nutritional yeast. I was oh. eating that garbage. I was eating soy. vinegar products. I was eating all the stuff that was just making me worse. Soy. Oh, yeah, I had a ton of soy. I mean, I, I was crazy about sushi. I mean, I grew up uh, on Cape Cod, so we always had fresh fish coming in. So I would get fresh tuna and just bring it home and turn it into sushi and dunk it in soy sauce all night and eat that. You know, I mean, probably had worms in me and everything else. God only knows. Um, but anyways, and then um, in 2016, uh, I went, went back to Standard American. And, and when I say I was Standard American, you got to understand, like, I was another level of disgusting gluttony. Like, I ate an unbelievable 
terrible <laughs> standard American diet. Like, um, so my wife would make me some kind of crock pot ensemble that I would take with me, like stewed beef and stuff. And then while I was out during the day, I'd hit up maybe five guys and go get some burgers and fries, or I'd hit up the burrito place and go get the burritos, or I would hit up wherever and just Chinese food, you know, just like gobble, gobble, gobble. And it, it got to the point where we had this Rodizio grill in Hyannis, um, where I used to live. And um, my good friend and coworker used to actually work, uh, used to actually be in the NFL. And he's a big guy, you know, he's, he's six, uh, he was six, five, 310 pounds at the time. And at that time I was five, 10, uh, 180, you know, somewhere in there. And I ate him under the table at the, <laughs> at the Rodigio grill. It was disgusting. And that's, I'm not saying this is a badge of honor. This was a problem. Like I, I was, this was like really bad. So anyways, this all culminated, um, in 2016. Now, Prior to my collapse, actually, my wife got really sick, and she started digging into the medical medium information before hmm. me, and she kind of used some of it. She wasn't sure about it. She kind of talked to me about it, and I was like, oh, that's kind of weird, and she used it, and then she got better. She got over whatever was going on with her. She had some digestive distress and stuff like that, and she got through it, and so we kind of just you know, dismissed it and went back to our standard American diet until... Um, November of 2016, one of us brought home a flu, and it was a bad one. We were all really sick for weeks, very sick, nausea, vomiting, all that kind of stuff. It was terrible. And afterwards, I just didn't recover. I just didn't. And I had decided after that illness, that's it, I'm trying to go vegan again. Again, high fat, high you know, grains, mm -hmm. high protein, all that stuff. And... My diligent wife made all a bunch of food for me, and I went to work, and I ate it, and I realized that I wasn't hungry anymore. I, wasn't, I didn't have an appetite, and I felt really full, and hours and hours and hours went by, and the next day, I realized I hadn't eaten anything, and I still felt full, and I was just burping. The burping came back, and it burped relentlessly, and it felt like I had, you know, GERD, so it was the esoph esophageal burning, I had the pressure from the burps rising up. It was just like that, 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 that. Just like that. I mean, it was chaos. You'll, you'll see the, you know, the pictures. Um, and it just never stopped. I, even when I would try to sleep, I was getting insomnia from this. Um, and I couldn't eat. And I had all this distress. I had constipation. Sometimes I had diarrhea. But I was brutally constipated. And this went on. I basically didn't eat for like three months. I was living off of juices. Fortunately, we had an Omega juicer, which we had gotten an Omega juicer way back in like 2012, but we never used the bloody thing. You know, we just, we just had it. Um, and then I started using it. And so I was living off of juice. And at a certain point, Sarah says to me, she's like, you know, this, we got to do something about this. You can't live off juice. Like something's wrong with you. We got to, we got to figure this out. You can't eat solid food. Um, and so I finally did, I, w I went to the hospital, first hospital trip in March of 2017. And I mean, all of my conventional medicine experience can be summed up with just like brutal, cold indifference. Just no sympathy, no patience, no understanding, not a care in the world. I, and I'm, t I'm talking to, as a person that came from conventional medicine. I was an EMT, okay? I worked on an ambulance. I helped people. I brought people to that hospital for years. But when I became a patient, I was treated like garbage. And I can say that 100% all day long. But anyway, so when the doctor finally got around to seeing me, they didn't want to hear about food at all. They didn't want to talk about what I ate. They didn't care about what I was eating. They didn't care about nutrition. They didn't care about any of that. Um, they'd asked if I was doing drugs. You know, they wanted to know about that. They wanted to know if I was some kind of drug user or something. Of course, I was not. I don't do anything like that. <laughs> um, so they gave me a barium injection, MRI, CAT scan, X-ray, sent me on my way, told me to follow up with the gastro, you know, gastro um intestinal doctor and so I did I went to that doctor and um, I'm not going to name any names or anything but if you ever seen the movie old school the villain principal 
in that movie Old School. Okay, this was this guy. So I get in there, and the guy's showing me pictures of his Lamborghini. He's telling me about all his money he's making. He has no patience for me. I'm trying to talk to him about my food, and I'm saying, guy, like, what am I, doctor, what am I supposed to eat? Like, please help me. And I'm saying that I'm burping, because this hasn't stopped. And he's like, eh, 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 eh. And he's like, why are you doing that? Like, why are you even doing that in here? You, you're being rude. And I said, sir, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't help it right now. I'm I'm really sick, and I'm trying to get your help so you can help me get through this. And he was like, ah, all right, let's look at your scan. So he pulls up the scan, and I was impacted. I was dangerously impacted, constipated, all the way up to my small intestine so bad that liquid was having a hard time getting through. So I was in danger of literally dying from constipation at that moment. Hmm. He didn't care. His response was, well, you know, we can try to figure this out. There's this new technique. We're going to get you to swallow a pill camera, okay? And if it gets stuck in there, don't worry. I'll just cut it out real quick. You won't even know what happened. But this is an experimental procedure, and it is expensive. But your insurance will cover it. Don't worry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm going to write on. So I didn't do that. I was sure. like, okay, buddy. I, you didn't sell me on that very well. I think I'm all good. Um, but I did go and take the soup prep, which was a colonoscopy prep yes. slurry that you drink that cleans you out. And probably I needed that at that point it was the only way to clear me out. My peristaltic action had halted. I was not, I mean, talk about gastroparesis. I was not moving a thing. I mean, a thing, but you know, just cleaning me out wasn't the answer. I did try to start eating again after that, quickly became impacted right after that. It was like my digestive system had died and I couldn't eat anymore and I could not process food. So went to the ER again in May, 2017. Um, this time while I was asleep, it was in the night and they tried to shoot me up with Demerol while I was asleep. And fortunately <laughs> my mother was there and said, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing? Said, oh, I'm just going to give him something to help him sleep. Don't worry. Said, he doesn't want that. Do you want that? She woke me up. I was like, no, don't. Like, what? I, I do not consent to this. And of course, this infuriated the nurse. And she was angry and yelling and cussing at me and telling me that I ought to be more respectful. And I ought to, you know. And anyway, I was just stunned and wanted to leave. So I did leave. And after that, we decided to try Boston uh, Medical Services. We started going to some of the top Boston hospitals. Um, and really, they're revered as some of the top uh, medical facilities on the planet at this point. So we went there. Um, doctors told me, okay, yeah, you probably have Ehlers-Danlos. And meanwhile, I had been going to a general practitioner throughout all this, and the general practitioner was telling me that, yeah, I probably had Ehlers-Danlos, that you know, we were going to start the testing for that to figure that out. Um, went to Boston, Boston, Scheduled some tests, told me, well, go home and just eat ice cream. Eat ice cream and drink, drink Gatorade. That's going to help you put the weight back on. So that's what you should try to do. You know, you're worried. You're obviously underweight. You've lost 50 pounds in whatever, three months yeah. or something. Just eat some ice cream. You know, treat yourself. That's going to be, and I, they literally wrote me a prescription for ice cream on yeah. a post-it and gave it to me and told me to bring it Yeah, when I was. Said, okay, yeah. great. Yeah, that. that. <laughs> when I was, uh, when I was really sick. And I had gone, this was probably a year, year in or something like that. I remember going to, same deal, same sort of doctor, stomach doctor. And he said, you know, you've lost a lot of weight. Why don't you go out, eat a hamburger, get a couple slices of pizza. Same thing, eat some ice cream and, you know, put that weight back on. You know, it's a total, total opposite yep. of what you should be doing. Of course. Of course. And then, you know, I didn't know that. And, I, and all I had known was I was trying to trust conventional medicine. I was trying to trust where my training had come from, which was conventional medicine my whole life. Like I said, my mother was a paramedic um, <clears throat> for 25 years. I had the honor of working alongside her in the fire department when I was an EMT. So I knew that I knew the game, you know, um, but anyways, that obviously didn't work, and um, they sent me to a rheumatologist initially to try to figure out if I had Ehlers-Danlos. That was a huge waste of time, and we then started the new gastrointestinal uh, doctor in Boston, which was one of the top in the country, and um, as I'm going to all these medical facilities, I'm starting to notice a trend 
of the thousands of desperate, suffering people that are going in and out of these facilities every single day and getting no answers and getting worse. And they're getting these treatments, they're getting these medications, they're getting these surgeries, and it is this ghoulish, barbaric dungeon apparatus that you're navigating through as you're seeing these poor people, you know, dragging around, barely alive, barely conscious, and God bless them. I was looking around like, how is this a place of healing? Like, what what is happening here? And then in my mind at that time, I was like, Oh, we got it all figured out, baby. This is, you know, this is a twenty, this is twenty seventeen. We got, you know, this is Star Trek Utopia. We got it figured out. Like medicine's got all the answers. We no worry. You just go in there. The doctor's gonna figure it out. And and it started to become apparent to me that that was not the case. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. that this illusion that had been created by media is not reality. And that hit me pretty hard as I started to realize, like, man, these guys don't have the answers. So, at that point. My vitals were really bad, and prior to that, I had been getting so much blood work. They were just bloodletting me like crazy. I was getting blood work constantly, constantly. Nobody was keeping track. No doctors were communicating with each other to figure out like how much blood was being drawn from me. And they just do it. They don't care. So um, eventually, I got blood taken, and I almost passed out. And I, the the phlebotomist was looking at me like, oh, "Are you okay? Oh, you're doing heroin." Oh, oh, you're a heroin addict? So, okay, so I guess I guess it's okay. I'll call the ambulance. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm sick, lady. I'm not doing heroin. Why does everybody keep saying that? Like, geez. So, I, I mean, I probably presented like that because I looked like, you know, Smeagol from, from well, Lord of the Rings at that point. I was just falling apart. You but, were sickly you know, looking. I, that's, that's just what they would tell me. Yeah, yeah, and that's, and that's where it went. And we do have, it, back on Cape Cod, there is a, a very serious... Um, opioid problem it's a crisis there's been a lot of documentaries made about it so I, it wasn't totally you know out of line for these people to be suspecting that um but anyway so went to the new gi i was getting now i was getting a proper endoscopy colonoscopy my vitals were so low that my vitals kept dropping while i was waiting for the procedure i was all you know on the stre- on the stretcher on the bed and everything and every time I would shut my eyes and start to go to sleep, my resting heart rate and respirations would go into crisis mode and would activate the code and the crash cart. People would come running over and I'd have to open my eyes to people holding paddles and everything like that. Like, oh, oh, he just fell asleep. He must just have a bradycardia or something like that. And so um, <clears throat> that was pretty shocking, you know, to, to wake up to that. Got the endoscopy, colonoscopy, came back, nothing, no answers. No information. They had no idea. So the next run was um, my general practitioner at Boston told me, oh, you're burping a lot? Just means you're full. Just take Miralax every hour until you start, stop burping when this happens. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll do that. So I started doing that. Probably almost killed me. That was really dangerous. And Miralax became the only way I was able to have a bowel movement for about a year and a half, which was just just so debilitating I can't even I, I have nothing but compassion and sympathy for the people that had to go through that it's just terrible um, but anyways so I, I have a little bit of notes that I'm trying to um, that I'm trying to keep, keep me on track with <laughs> but, no. um, right, so, so after that they signed me up with a... so so um, <clears throat> you're doing the the, the doctor thing. Where were you in this process right now? Because we were, you were jumping from doctor to doctor to doctor. How many years were you jump? You doing this? Um, it was about. It was about. We're we're still in 2017, but I had been starting. I had started to see I, my first hospital visit was in early 2017, and then a lot of problems and I was seeing doctors in 2016 and this ran its course all the way to 2018 so really condensed it was all happening within about two years of just very rapid decompensation of my body very shocking and that's why this my my situation was so shocking because it was so rapid it was so sudden it was so aggressive it came out of nowhere because I went from the seemingly like in shape guy that was just doing everything to all of a sudden like boom i'm this chronically ill debilitated patient work walking with a cane 
And that's, it was very quickly, it was very aggressive and very scary. Um, so now we're ending 2017 where I'm very ill at this point. I'm big, I can barely eat. I'm trying all these different foods. Um, but anyway, so I got, we made it into 2018. I was so sick. I decided I had to go to, um, back to conventional medicine and try to figure this out. I went to the doctors. They sent me to a genetics department. It was one of the top genetics departments on, on the planet. I worked with the head of genetics and, and they did a bunch of tests on me and they said, okay, well, you don't fit the genetic markers for Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, but because you have a family history of it, because I have lots of family members that were diagnosed with this and you have all the clinical presentations of it, we're going to go ahead and diagnose you with Ehlers-Danlos. So what that means is you have Ehlers-Danlos vascular uh, type, which means that everything inside of you is garbage. All of your soft tissue, all of your connective tissue, all of your organs, all of your blood vessels, they're all compromised and any one of them could just pop on you without notice any minute. So you're a walking time bomb and you can't work. You can't go near any kind of heavy activity. You got to be careful. If you take a fall, you could pop on the inside like a balloon full of wet hamburger. Oh, so this is what I was told. And imagine how soul crushing that is oh. to a young man who's got a three year old at home trying to survive and provide. I was crushed. I was devastated. I couldn't believe it. I, I wouldn't accept it. I was like, no, I'm not disabled. This can't be. I was just working. I just started a business. I was just fine. And I would pray every night. I would say, please, God, let me survive and provide. Please. I would rock myself to sleep while I was burping, just saying like, please just let me survive till tomorrow. Please just let me survive till tomorrow so I can provide for my son. And I kept living. And all the while, I want to back up for a second. So when Sarah found medical medium information back in 2016, I started feeling sick and I started praying right away like, man, how am I going to, what's the answer, God? Like, what is the answer? What am I supposed to do? God, are you even there? Is there even a God? Like, what's going on? And Sarah had written down every supplement we needed, every major food, everything, and signed uh, met from Anthony William, medical medium, and put it on our refrigerator and then on the wall, right in the kitchen, right where we worked every day. So my whole entire struggle, I had the answers right in front of my face the whole yeah. entire time. Yeah. But every time I looked at it, I was like, this guy, what? This can't be, like, this guy's crazy. Like, he's talking about talking to a ghost or something? Like, I can't, no, I can't entertain this. Like, this is serious. I need to survive here. I, I can't play games. I gotta live. And so I just ignored it. I was like, you know what? No, I, this can't be right. This can't be right. It goes against everything everybody else is saying. At least between conventional medicine and alternative medicine, there seemed to be some kind of cohesive narrative where they agreed that certain syndromes existed at least and that you know they had different arguments on how they should be treated, but it was vastly different from what Anthony said. So I couldn't, I couldn't accept it. Anyway, after the genetics thing... Um, and meanwhile, my symptoms keep coming back stronger and stronger and stronger until finally I'm at the point where all of my doctors kind of get impatient with me. The naturopathic doctors, my conventional doctors, and they say, you know what, Josh, we think this is in your head. We think that you're creating all of this madness. And it's time for you to really consider antidepressants. I know it doesn't sound good. I know it's not anything to be ashamed of. It's okay to get on this. And I was like, what? I'm not depressed. At all. I'm, I'm scared of dying because I'm, I can't eat. But I'm like, this isn't a result of depression. This is a result of something else. Like something's wrong with my body. Right. So I, I didn't want to accept that until in March of 2018, I had what I can only describe as like a stroke. I was home with my son. And um, until one day, uh, I had one of my good friends, um, he's a Jamaican guy, and he, he started bringing me Jamaican supplements from Blue Mountain, uh, his family literally would go into the bush to find me special herbs and supplements for, to send to me to help me to get better because everybody I knew was trying to help me. Everybody was trying to throw everything they could think of to try to make me better. He happened to be at the house. I had like a stroke. All of a sudden, I couldn't speak. I couldn't think. I couldn't remember anybody's name. My vision, vision got blurry. My speech was uh, all messed up until they called the ambulance. They didn't know what was going on. I went to the hospital. 
accused me of being on heroin again. I said, okay, oh, here's another heroin addict. And put me in the put me in a room and just ignored me and they were very my wife actually met me at the hospital this time and she witnessed it uh, how uh just terrible they were being to me in the hospital until they finally released me and after that I was I was desperate I was like okay until it was it was April 2018 I came home and I was still trying to work throughout all this and it was not going well um <laughs> I, I was walking with a cane and everything on the job site with a tool belt on it was crazy and um, so I could go visit a friend of mine named Rhea Cataldo, who actually happened to work for Anthony William for mm -hmm. a very long time. I was aware of this, and I didn't really think much of it. I just went to visit her. And while I was, while I was there, she says, you know, um, you, uh, you ever think about trying medical meter information? <laughs> you know, you ever think about, like, trying that because I was telling her obviously I looked very sick and I was like yeah I mean I looked into it what what do you mean is it real did you have digestive problems did you have SIBO like I did and she was like well yeah I mean I had a lot of the same stuff you did and you know it was one of the biggest problems was eggs and that was the first person that told me that I shouldn't be eating eggs like directly and I was like huh every other person I've talked to for all these has been telling me to eat eggs like crazy I was like all right yeah. well you know what? I got nothing to lose. This is the one thing I haven't tried. I've tried everything else. I'm going to try a medical medium. So May 19th, 2018, at my worst, at my most ill, at my most suffering, at my most desperate, I grabbed a celery juice. And I knew it was it. Just, I took that first sip and I was like, this is it. I know this is it. Everything else I had tried, I was like, I don't know, but this was it. And I never looked back. I started having celery juice, heavy metal detox smoothie, and spinach soup every single day. And I have had those every single day since May 19th, 2018. Um, given a couple times when I was sick with various bugs or something like that, which was a handful, but by and large, I never stopped. <laughs> That's I got better. You found the <laughs> answer. Yeah, that's a crazy story, man. Like, yeah. Uh, the, the, the and they were on the wall the whole system. time. The whole time. You know, they tell you to eat <laughs> eggs because for someone with digestive problems, you can't feel the eggs. They don't affect your digestive tract, right? So they don't right. aggravate your right. stomach and cause all these problems because you can't feel them. <laughs> so it's like a way for doctors to just push push you away, but just make sure you're getting some sort of nourishment. If you call it that, but yep, that's crazy, man. 